Let's talk about this. Let's say that we are going to hit a golf ball really hard. If we hit a golf ball really, really hard, what happens? Well, here's the Earth. If I'm standing on the Earth and I hit a golf ball really hard, what can happen? I mean, we know if we just hit a golf ball, it sort of follows this parabola, right? This projectile motion. But if I hit it really, really hard, we could get to a point where this thing orbits the Earth. Okay? No air. Forget about air resistance here. Okay, so you're standing on an airless Earth, you hit this golf ball really hard, such that it orbits. This is called a low Earth orbit. And let's ask the question, how hard would you have to hit it? How fast does that golf ball need to be moving in order to orbit the Earth? All right, we can probably figure that out. What forces are acting on the golf ball after I hit it? Gravity. Gravity is, of course, down at that point there. When the golf ball gets over here, what forces are acting on it? Gravity. Which way? Not down anymore. Towards the center of the Earth. Okay. When it gets over here, it is, of course, acting towards the center of the Earth. Everywhere it goes around, it's always acting towards the center of the Earth. And so that gravity keeps it in its orbit. Okay. All right. Is that it? Is that the only force acting on it? Yeah. If there's no air, that's the only force acting on it. All right. Newton's second says sum of the forces in the radial direction is equal to mv squared over r. There's only one force in the radial direction. It's mg. That's equal to mv squared over r. But if you are very near the surface of the Earth, the radius is just the radius of the Earth. Right? So that is your R. And now look what happens. V is G times the radius of the Earth. And we have to take the square root of that. M drops out. There's no mass of the golf ball anymore. So you could do it with a baseball, or you could do it with a cannonball. Wouldn't matter. You get the same answer for V. Units look right. We've got meters per second squared. I'm going to multiply by meters. And so we're going to get meters squared per second squared. And when I take the square root, that works out. Let's see what this is for real. Okay, G is 9.8. What's the radius of the Earth? We talked about this last time. Anybody remember? 6.37 times 10 to the 6 meters. That's the radius of the Earth. So punch this into your calculator and tell me what you get. And let's just approximate it right here. This is 10. This is 6. So I'm going to get 60 times 10 to the 6. And then I have to take the square root of that. Square root of 60 is pretty close to 8, right? So that's got to be 8 times 10 to the 3. And the units are, of course, meters per second. Did anybody get an actual answer for that? Seventy-nine hundred. Okay, so we were pretty close on our guess. Seventy-nine hundred meters per second. 
How fast is that in miles per hour? Remember, the rule is just approximate it by doubling it. So 8,000 meters per second would be about 16,000 miles per hour. If you hit the golf ball at 16,000 miles per hour, it would orbit the Earth. Can you do that? Can you hit a golf ball at 16,000 miles per hour? Probably not. Can we as humans get anything to move at 16,000 miles per hour? The answer, of course, is yes. We have something right now that is moving at 16,000 miles per hour, or even a little bit faster. What is it? It is the International Space Station. Remember how we talked about Scott Kelly that just came off the International Space Station? The International Space Station is higher than this golf ball, but it's not that much higher in comparison to the radius of the Earth. And so this speed is approximately the speed of the International Space Station. It's you know up or down by 1,000 miles per hour, but it's roughly that. Okay? The International Space Station is in orbit. It is only acting under gravity. It is in free fall the whole time as it orbits. The Earth falls away underneath it. And it's going at 16,000 miles per hour, which means every hour and a half, it goes once around the Earth. Scott Kelly saw another sunrise every hour and a half. I mean, that seems like it would mess up your body a little bit, right? Okay. 16,000 miles per hour. Anybody ever seen the International Space Station? Have you guys ever seen it with your naked eye? Okay, it's super easy to do. You go to the NASA website and they tell you where to look in the sky at what time and you'll see a bright star appear on the horizon and just go all the way across the sky. It doesn't make that noise, of course, but you know, you get that, <laughs> right? And it takes about like four or five minutes to traverse the whole sky. It just looks like a shooting star that is moving really, really slowly. And you can see it with your naked eye. You don't even need a telescope or binoculars. And it's because those big old solar panels, they reflect a lot of sunlight. And so that sunlight coming back down to the Earth, you can actually see with your naked eye. I did this with my kids, and they were just like, whoa, there it goes. Woo! And you can just watch it go. And then if you wait another hour and a half, it'll come back around again. Just kind of cool. Okay. 